You're watching Power Nation. Today on Engine Power, we revamp our 496 cubic inch big block Chevy for its new home. And the Samtec Coyote powered Mustang comes in for some serious testing. everyone, welcome to Engine Power. You may recognize this rig right here. This is one half of our twin big block buildup. This is 496 cubic inches of big block Chevy glory. Now we've built this engine in a couple of different iterations and both of them make great power for their application. And obviously because this is here, there's more to come. But to see how this engine ended up here, we have to jump in the way back machine and see the historic but storied past of this engine. This engine was originally part of our twin engine dyno experiment where we built two identical 496 cubic inch big block Chevys that made 600 horsepower and 630 pound feet each and ran them hooked together at the same time on our engine dyno. After engine A ended up in a Music City Trucks project, we took engine B and gave it a few changes to make it an extreme street power plant with a larger solid roller camshaft. 365 cc trick flow cylinder heads, Edelbrock Super Victor intake, and a Holley 4500 flange throttle body EFI. The engine pumped out 752 horsepower and 586 pound feet while turning 7200 RPM. Now that was some really awesome testing, not only because we got to try out one of our crazy ideas, but also because we showed that you can build engines that perform completely different with the same short block assembly. And today we're gonna to be putting this engine into its final form. Our first combination made really great low RPM torque and okay power. Our second combination turned a ton of RPM, made awesome power, but we lost some of that torque. So today we're gonna to be shooting for somewhere in the middle with our final combination. And we're also gonna be making this engine easily swappable and low maintenance for a very good reason. We always get questions from viewers about what happens to engines when we're done with them and how they can get one. Well, for this engine, we partnered with POR 15 products to actually give you, the viewer, a chance to win this engine when we are done. But before this engine gets into its final form, there's a lot of parts that have to come off, so let's get cracking. After slipping the serpentine belt off, the front accessory drive can be partially disassembled and removed from the engine. Next, we'll pop off the valve covers and remove the rocker stud girdles for easy access to the polylock rocker nut. The rockers and push rods are removed from one cylinder at a time, making sure the cylinder is at TDC compression stroke. All the valve train is kept in order and looks great for a high spring pressure solid roller setup. The intake was sealed well, but after a little wiggling, it comes off. Well, this was a brand new build and it's only had dyno time on it and engines had no troubles and ran awesome. So we weren't expecting to find anything, but it's still a good sign that everything looks good. There's no abnormal wear and uh, that's a good sign for a foundation. We'll remove some of the guide plates to get a socket on all of the head bolts. The ARP fasteners can be loosened up before removing the TrickFlow 365cc cylinder heads. When the carbon looks like you've spray painted it on like that, that yeah. means everything's doing what it's supposed to in the combustion chamber. We'll keep tearing the engine down with the lifters and harmonic damper coming next. We always feel satisfied when the oil looks great and has no particulates in it. To get to the camshaft, we'll remove the oil pan and timing cover. We'll reuse this double roller timing set later, but with it out of the way, we can slide out the large solid roller camshaft. If you're like us, you not only like working on your hot rod, but if the need arises to work on your daily driver, you're up to that task as well. So when you're looking for parts from budget-minded all the way up to OEM quality or above, look at rockauto.com because they have a wide selection of anything you're gonna be working on. For instance, they have a large selection of gaskets if you're just sealing your engine back up. If you are doing tune-up stuff to your ignition, say you're working on your old Mopar and need a lock cylinder, they have you covered. Also, brake components drums, shoes, pads, rotors, and even brake hardware to make your job easier. All in all, no matter what you're working on, Rock Auto has your solution, so get online and check them out. Coming up, the guys from Samtech stop by with their Pro-Charged Coyote Mustang for some high-powered dyno testing. 
We have a special guest today here in the shop, School of Automotive Machinists and Technology, better known as SAMTEC. EFI instructor Darren Smithers and students Charles and Cameron are here and they brought us a car. Now, this car goes all around the country and is displayed to show what the SAMTEC students get to work on. It's a real race car, so they said, we want to test some stuff while we're out. So I said, hey, we have a chassis dyno. So come strap it down to the dyno jet and let's make some hits. And this car has a long and storied history at SAMTEC and is completely student built. So Darren, tell us about the current combination of the car. Well, we use the SN95 for training and testing purposes, current configuration, uh, about 10 to one compression. It has our cylinder head program in it, F1A94. Pro Charger and currently running C16. That's pretty racy, so uh, it's fun to get to work on actual race cars. Tell us a little bit about that, Charles. Uh, so it's like a dream come true. Like when I was a little kid, I used to play with matchbox cars, and then now it's got my hands on the real thing. It's just the school's amazing. Working on cars is even better. What do you think, Cameron? I think it's a lot of fun. You get to go and play around and in real time change parts, do it yourself, and see the benefits and the um, cons to what you're trying to accomplish. Sure, now you have a few things you want to test today, so uh, I said enough talk, let's uh, get this thing fired up and see if we can make some power. Sounds good. Uh, we're gonna establish a baseline on this dyno and these atmospheric conditions and see what we're starting with. All right, everybody got ear protection? Everybody good? Yep. All right, we'll light it. Darren will gently run the car up to 6,000 RPM before starting the full throttle pull. What is it? Clean run, 897.28, 631.12. We're within two horsepower of our dyno. Okay, so uh, that means everybody's stuff's right. All right, so what's the first thing you want to do? I'll have Cameron pull the logs. Okay. We'll walk through that. And then if you want to start, I don't think we have enough heat on the plug for it to really tell us. So we'll put two in it and see if we roll over or make any more. Sure. And go All from right. there. I like it. Awesome. And go file, save as. After looking at the data logs and making sure everything looks normal, Cameron will add two degrees of timing and make adjustments to the fuel table to compensate for today's atmospheric conditions. Nine twelve, six forty one. Nine twelve and six forty one. I would say with that a, is an improvement. With yeah. a with a good pickup down low. That's spectacular. I see. I can see it from here. Yeah. All right. When doing R and D, it's important to check your tune up on each run by checking the spark plugs and comparing them to the acquired data logs. One of the tests Darren wants to try is going from their current C sixteen fuel to a more expensive oxygenated race fuel called Q sixteen. Because the oxygen content, I would imagine, uh, as rich as we have it, it'll pick up power, but we would want to play around with the tune to ultimately optimize it, but just pouring it in, uh, I expect it to pick up as is. There we go. 946.19 and 661 for torque. Ooh. Ooh, that's a nice change right there. Yeah. That's a lot more than we thought. We'll have to see what the log says. I'd imagine it would be adding a bunch of fuel. Yeah. Because more fuel, more oxygen. Yeah. Uh, and being boosted. Testing is literally endless, right? Because there's always something to do. And everything affects everything else. Once you do something, you're like, oh my god, now we have to go down that rabbit hole. Because think of all the things. You're already thinking about it, because I can see it going. You're, yeah. you're, you're, you're already what thinking on what you're going to change. Now, so. yeah. It's a solid gain everywhere in the graph. It's the same graph, just higher, which is good. There's nothing weird going on, but. Uh... Yeah, and how fun is this to go do a bunch of testing and see what kind of power we can make. Congrats to you, congrats to you, everything. Thank you. Did what it was supposed to do, and uh, just continue on from here. This is exactly the kind of real world testing students experience at SAMTEC. Now, they can't wait to take this data and use it at the track. Our big block goes back together with a new combination and a new look. 
In today's Summit Racing Tech Tip, we're gonna show you how to use one of their adjustable piston ring compressors. Now the first step is to properly lube the piston rings and the compressor with some type of assembly oil. Then we're gonna take the compressor, slide it onto the piston from the rod side until it's just below the piston rings themselves. And we can set the tension using the hose clamp and we don't want it too tight. We want it just enough to compress the rings and you still should be able to slide it off the piston by hand when you're done. Now, if you were installing this in the engine, you would square the ring compressor up with the deck and then gently tap or push the piston into the bore. And the good news is that once it's set, you can use it on the other piston and rod combinations without actually changing it. Now, these come in a bunch of different sizes and they're adjustable to fit almost any automotive application. And if you want one for yourself, you can find it at Summit Racing Equipment. We're back on our 496 cubic inch big block Chevy and kicking off the reassembly by installing this new hydraulic roller camshaft from Summit Racing Equipment. It has durations at 50 thousandths lift of 253 degrees on the intake and 261 degrees on the exhaust with the lobe set on a 112 degree lobe separation angle. Lift at the valve is 632 thousandths on the intake and 648 thousandths on the exhaust. We'll reinstall our timing set and set the intake center line at 104 degrees. A new gasket and some silicone seal up the timing cover. We'll also use a new one-piece oil pan gasket and dabs of silicone on the corners to prevent leaks on the freshly cleaned oil pan. To seal up the front end, we can press on the balancer and recheck our TDC timing mark. We're not only going to be revamping this engine, but also we're going to be revamping the look of this engine by painting it with POR 15's engine enamel. Now POR 15 is well known for the rust preventative coating that can be put directly over rust, seals it in and keeps it from spreading. And we're going to be using that as a base foundation, but then we're going to be painting this engine with Buick green turquoise. Now that's going to give it a really unique look and the POR 15 engine enamel is awesome. It's good for up to 300 degrees and it comes out with a smooth, glossy finish. We're also going to be adding some black accents, so when we're done, this engine is going to look pretty sweet. We'll add a small amount of thinner to the rust preventative so we can spray it rather than brush it on. There's no rust on this engine, but the rust preventative provides excellent adhesion to the surface and a solid color to paint over. A few light coats as a base, followed by a thicker coat, provides an awesome foundation. After cleaning the gun, we can load it with the comparatively thinned POR15 engine enamel. We chose this color for a unique look that is still from the GM family. Laying the paint down in several coats, we get that smooth, glossy finish that we love. Now that the engine enamel is fully dried, we can return to assembly. A small amount of silicone goes at the top of the deck surfaces to prevent oil seepage and the Cometic 4320 bore, 27 thousandths thick MLS head gaskets are laid into place. These are the 320cc TrickFlow PowerPort cylinder heads from the first iteration and their 122cc combustion chambers give us a measured static compression ratio of 10.33 to 1. They'll provide enough flow for our new power goal and are already set up for our new hydraulic roller camshaft. The reused ARP head bolts are torqued in three stages to a final value of 70 pound-feet. The rest of the valve train is being reused from the previous builds since the components only have dyno time on them. The Howard's hydraulic roller lifters have been soaking in oil and are slid into the pre-lubed lifter bores. These TrickFlow push rods are 7900 and 8800 long with a 3 8 diameter and are actuating these 1.7 ratio comp pro magnum rocker arms. The rocker girdles aren't necessary on this lower spring pressure setup, so the preload is set at one half turn past zero lash on these shorter poly locks. We'll install the rocker arms in the standard firing order of the engine, making sure that each cylinder is at TDC compression stroke before adjusting them. With these new SCE intake gaskets glued in place, a bead of RTV around the coolant ports and on the china walls will seal up the color-matched Edelbrock 454R intake manifold. Like last time, it's cinched down with a set of stainless ARP intake bolts. With the painted Chevrolet valve covers in place, the color combo of this engine really starts to come together. Finally, we can reinstall the Holly mid-mount accessory drive. 
With everything attaching to the water pump housing, it goes on as easily as it came off. At last, we can roll our new combination into the dyno cell to run this engine for the third and final time. Next up, we test our Rowdy Pump Gas 496 in the dyno cell. All right, so we have our 496 cubic inch big block Chevy on the dyno and we have it running. So we've topped this thing with one of our 1050 Dominator dyno carburetors so that it is easy to get into a car and get running and it has no spacer on it so that it has plenty of hood clearance. Uh, we've been making some preliminary pulls on this engine, tuning on it, tweaking on it a little bit, and we think we have it right where we want it for pump gas. So we're gonna make some pulls and see what this thing makes. It is at operating temp, which is street temps, 175, 180 degrees. Yep. And so uh, we're gonna we're gonna make a hit and uh, see what our racy street engine does here. It looks cool, I can tell you that. Yeah. All right, here we go. Nice. Just like that, smooth as glass. Heck yeah. Yeah, Dang, nice, okay. 629. Yep, and 577. But that's a flat torque curve. That's why I, I like building engines with flat torque curves because they just kind of carry, you know? Right, right. And uh, that's, that's pretty I good. I mean, everything looks good as far as the air fuel ratios look nice. The yep. oil pressure looks nice. Uh, 629 at 6200. Yep. Yeah. 577 at 5100. So. Yeah, and we were, we were shooting for somewhere between the first version and the second version. Right. So this is this is kind of, you know, the the perfect combination right. of that. It's very close to torque of the second version, but it's got, you know, it's almost was it like 20 up, 25 up right, on the right. on the on the, on the first version. Right. So I think that's perfect. But, but think of the things that we've changed, right? We've yep. changed the cylinder head, we have changed the camshaft, we have changed the intake manifold, we have changed the carburetor, you know. So yeah. this is but this is still one of those deals where you could put this in a car, and this is what I want to kind of do here. You could drive it to the strip, you know, everything's gonna be you can drive there with the AC on and then yeah. cool it off and make a run. So what I want to do is let's uh, let's drag strip cool this thing and uh, see what it makes when it's all cooled off. Oil temperature is still up there. It's at operating temp now, the oil's operating temp. So so let's cool the water down and make another hit on it and see if we pick up anything. All right, so we have cooled the engine off pretty good. We're at 119 now. It'll go down a little bit more once we start the engine up and get the water pump circulating. But uh, this is going to be a drag strip pass where, you know, this should show a decent in increase in power. It varies from engine to engine, but this is kind of reminiscent of if you took it to the drag strip, got a bunch of oil temp in it, cooled it off, and then made a pass. So we're not going to ice down the intake or anything like that. No, I think we're not to that point yet. No, not that. Well, let's, let's just see what this does. Yeah. And she just leveled off at 110. Here we go. Hit it. That made it, might have made a little different. Maybe. I think I saw a few numbers. Dang, okay, 635. That's pretty solid for, for just cooling it down. I'll take 635. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, yep, yeah, that's wow. that's good. So, uh, let's um, see. 635, I mean, what, that's, a, that's a little bit of a game. What were we? 629, 635? Yeah, six, 629 to 635. So, I mean, that's a little bit. What um, would, would, would torque do? I mean, we're still uh, we're still a 77. Yeah, so uh, 78. 78. 6, 78. So, 78. So, yeah. so, basically, up one pound feet. So, not a huge difference. Hey. Um, it, it varies from engine to engine, but it's always fun to see what it does. And uh, but this thing, man, this thing looks good. And I'm, I'm kind of excited for whoever gets to get it because oh, no, I kind of wish it was us. <laughs> this is a nice one. The the, uh, the thing is, full accessory drive. Yep. Starts, runs, everything is very smooth. It's I, a drop in, really. It is a drop yeah. in. I mean, you know, you could put a big giant space right. We may even pick up some power. You can have that big tall manifold on it, and it, it, it performs well. But if yeah. you don't want to butcher a big hole yeah. in your hood, or put a cow hood on it, yep. you know, this this way, it's easy to swap into something. Um, you know, it's not making crazy power where somebody really has to spend a bunch of money to right. put a drivetrain behind it. You know, this is this is a good swap engine, and it's a I say for pump gas, it's it's a pretty stout engine. Pump I think. gas performer. Heck All right. Yeah. Well, nice good job. job. Happy times.
Our engine dyno is a lot like a vehicle in the terms that it requires some regular maintenance. And today we're going to be taking care of some of that maintenance by replacing our battery with a Duralast Gold battery. Yes, our dyno does have a car battery to run a lot of the systems on the engine, things like the ignition or electronic fuel injection if we use it, but also things on the engine dyno itself, like our standalone ignition and our twin starter setup. They all run off a standard 12 volt car battery. That's why we chose the Duralast Gold line of battery, because we needed a quality battery for our engine dyno. Duralast has gone through and engineered this battery to meet or exceed an OE specification of the same group size. And they started out by building an extremely durable case for the battery. Then they gave it really thick lead plates and a special gel to help it resist vibration, which being in an engine dyno room with a lot of high horsepower open header engines, there's a fair bit of vibration that it needs to contest with. It also has a high output capacity. This battery has 900 cold cranking amps, 1,000 cranking amps, and a reserve capacity of 150, which is way over an OE battery of the same size. And Duralast backs this battery with a three-year warranty, so we don't have to worry about it. We can install it, know that it's gonna run everything we need it to, and do it for years to come. To find a Duralast Gold battery for your vehicle, you can stop by your local AutoZone. To find more cool builds like this one, check out Engine Power on Power Nation.